time for my next kind of like reaction video. I'm up to song number 988 on my list of my top 1,000 favorite songs of all time. And this song is Sun City by the Artists United Against Apartheid. Now let me tell you the story. Artists United Against Apartheid was a 1985 protest group founded by activist and performer Stephen Van Zandt and record producer Arthur Baker to protest against apartheid in South Africa. The group produced the song Sun City and the album Sun City that year, which is considered a notable anti-apartheid song. Now, Sun City is a luxury resort and casino developed by a hotel magnate named Saul Kersner as part of the Sun International Group of Properties. It's officially opened December 7, 1979, located in uh, the Bantustin of uh, Botswana, forgive me if I pronounce it wrong, uh, as the place had been declared an independent state by South Africa's apartheid government, although unrecognized as such by any other country. It could provide entertainment such as gambling and topless review shows, uh, which were banned in South Africa. In protest of apartheid, an international boycott by performers continued for years, although some, such as, and I'll name them, the Beach Boys, Linda Ronstadt, Cher, Millie Jackson, Liza Minnelli, Frank Sinatra, Paul Anka, Status Quo, Rod Stewart, Elton John, and Queen all ignored the boycott and played there and made their money. You know, <clears throat> so, uh, Steven, little Stephen, Stephen Van Zandt, became interested in writing a song about Sun City to make parallels with the plight of Native Americans. Uh, Danny Schechter, a journalist who was then working with ABC News 2020, suggested turning the song into a different kind of We Are the World. Or as Schechter explains, a song about change, not charity, freedom, not famine. Uh, when Van Zandt was finished writing Sun City, he, Schechter, and producer Arthur Baker spent the next several months searching for artists to participate in the project. Van Zandt initially declined to invite Springsteen, not wanting to take advantage of their friendship, but Schechter had no problem asking, and Springsteen accepted the invitation. Van Zant was also shy about calling legendary jazz artist Miles Davis. Schechter initiated a contact, and Davis uh, uh, also accepted. Eventually, Van Zant, Baker, and Schechter would gather an array of artists, described by rock critic Dave Marsh as the most diverse lineup of popular musicians ever assembled for a single session including DJ Cool Herc, Grandmaster Melly Mel, Ruben Blades, Bob Dylan, Pat Benatar, Herbie Hancock, Ringo Starr and his son, Zach Starkey, Lou Reed, Run DMC, Peter Gabriel, Bob Geldof, Clarence Clemens, David Ruffin, Eddie Kendricks, Darlene Love, Bobby Womack, Africa Bambada, Curtis Blow, Fat Boys, Jackson Brown, Daryl Hannah, Peter Wolf. Bono, George Clinton, Keith Richards, and Ronnie Wood, Bonnie Raitt, Hall & Oates, Jimmy Cliff, Big Youth, Michael Monroe, uh, Peter Garretts from uh, uh, Midnight Oil, uh, let's see, Ray Barreto, Gil Scott Heron, Nona Hendrix, Kashif, uh, and Joey Ramone. <laughs> that is a mixture of names. You could throw them all in a hat and mix it up. I don't think you could come out with something more diverse than that lineup. That was incredible. Uh, these also these artists also vowed never to perform at Sun City because to do so in their minds would be an acceptance of apartheid. Um, so they all got together, and uh, some in some situations these artists were all over the world or in different parts of the country. A lot of them were able to film in their session they received uh the music for the song the words or whatever and were able to send their uh, performance on video and they were able to be mixed into the song which was a pretty hard thing to do for 1985 it's not the same technology as today so they deserve a lot of credit arthur baker really did a yaleman's work here you know getting this together this was a lot of work indeed so the song was released at near the very end of 1985. Did not do particularly well on the pop charts. I think a lot of top 40 stations 
were hesitant to play it because it was such a protest song and it was such an in-your-face kind of challenge to Reagan even. Some of the lyrics were critical of Reagan. So some radio stations didn't want to shake things up in that time period. Um, only about half the radio stations in the U.S. actually played the song. So I'm objecting to the lyrics, explicit criticism of Reagan. Um, but it was a major success in a lot of other countries. It hit the top 10 in Canada, number 10, hit number 3 in the Netherlands, number 4 in Australia, number 21 in the UK. The song, of course, not surprisingly, was banned in South Africa. Um, so that's pretty much the rundown of what the song is about. I want to play the video for you now. Some, some people are not going to be very familiar to you in this video, depending on what kind of fan you are, or some of them are going to excite you because these were the first bunch. The, I think the first real mainstream attempt to get a bunch of rappers together to perform on the same track. This was pretty uh, pretty strong feat. You really get total, uh, you have to totally commend Little Steven and Arthur Baker and the job they did on this. To me, this is more impressive than the other charity singles we've seen. Uh, even though the level of stars here may not be the same, but there's still a lot of people that you don't really see performing outside of their own records that show up to do this. this was, it was very impressive. All right? So I'm going to stop talking now. I'm going to play the darn video. All right? <laughs> I'm going to play the whole darn thing. I hope you enjoy it. I'll say a few things uh, after we complete the whole video. Okay? Be back.
That is, that is so cool. There's all those artists, different style of artists getting together on this track was very, very impressive. I really uh, think it's great. But sadly, in the years since then, it hasn't gotten the same attention in terms of charity singles as Band-Aid or USA for Africa did, for sure, because it was more of a starvation. You're saving lives. Well, here, it's indirectly, you're saving lives as well. You're saving the freedom of people, and it definitely had an effect on the events that would happen afterwards, especially Nelson Mandela's emergence as the hero that he was. That the, I don't think that happens with the same force without this occurring a few years earlier. So, and as it turned out, even though it wasn't really intended to be a money raiser, wasn't looking to do that, it was more of a message, more of a protest, um, the album and the single ended up raising more than a million dollars for anti-apartheid projects. It got the United Nations attention, and that certainly got the ball rolling for things to go in a positive direction at the time. So, and that's about that. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed my reaction to this. I think it's a great, great kick-ass song for its time as well. Um, so please share, please subscribe, please hit the like button, and keep on watching, all right? I wish you all peace and love.